Uh, hi, this is Dr. Kavistein, cardiology. Um, right now, we're doing the stress test on a patient who's been experiencing chest pain and, ch and palpitation. Uh, we decided to look at his heart and make sure that the valves and the uh, walls of the heart is moving well and that there is no problem with the electrical activity in the heart. Um, the way the stress test is being done is we look at the heart with ultrasound before uh, we start the exercise. We take a few specific pictures to look at the valves, to look at the walls of the heart and make sure they're functioning appropriately. Then uh, we place 12 leads on the patient and ask the patient to stand on a treadmill and start exercising. Uh, we do the stress test based on the Bruce protocol. It's a specific protocol that the, the treadmill goes faster and higher every three minutes. And every, every stage, um, we check the, for the blood pressure and we monitor the electrical activity of the heart. If there's a blockage in any of the arteries in the heart, um, during the exercise, as the heart rate goes up, there is not enough blood coming and circulating through the heart. As a result, there's EKG changes that we find and we will detect. Um, right now, I'm looking at the at the EKG tracing on the tread on, on, the, on the machine and making sure that the patient doesn't have any specific EKG changes that could correspond to the significant blockage um, in, in the in the arteries in the heart. Uh, my assistant Nicole is uh, checking the blood pressure every so often to make sure the blood pressure doesn't go too high uh, during a treadmill stress test. This also gonna is a good test to tell to tell us how the blood pressure and cardiovascular system acts during, um, during a daily activity while, you know, while the um, patient is walking to uh, do the grocery shopping or doing daily activity. Um, as he gets comfortable during the treadmill stress test, every, once the three, first stage is finished, uh, the second stage goes faster and higher, and we continue this process every three minutes until we reach the target heart rate. The target heart rate is a specific uh, number for every person according to the age. Uh, the formula to detect the target heart rate is 220 minus the age of the person, and we usually try to get 85% of that number. Um, this patient who is on the treadmill, uh, he is about 27 years old, and his target heart rate is about 150. Uh, as soon as he gets to the tar target heart rate, uh, we stop the treadmill and we bring him to the, uh, to, uh, to, to, the, to the table and we look at his heart with ultrasound machine to make sure there is no significant blockage in the arteries and the, heart, and the, the walls of the heart is moving, so as the valves. Um, during a treadmill stress test, we also look for oxygenation. This is just w what we just did. We just looked, put the pulse oximeter on the finger to look at the oxygenation, make sure the patient is getting enough oxygen throughout the body. As you notice that the patient is going faster and um, you don't appreciate the treadmill, but uh, right now we reach the target heart rate and we're stopping the treadmill stress test and we're gonna ask him to come and lay down on the bed so we can look at the ultrasound um, on his heart and make sure that uh, there is no significant blockage. Now this test, uh, we call it the radiation-free stress testing uh, because we don't give any radiation to the patient to look for the blockage, we use ultrasound, which is radiation free to, to find out if there is any significant blockage in the heart. Uh, this is a much better test because we don't um, inject anybody with any radioactive material that could potentially increase the risk of cancer in the future. Um, and we also, we, we get a lot more information uh, that the typical uh, uh, regular treadmill stress test or even a nuclear stress test would show us. Uh, right now, we just got the last blood pressure of the patient, and uh, he finished the test without any difficulty.